and you're on. Hey, my name is Dr. Gerald Cohen. This is the first class of four called the Four Worlds of Kabbalistic Healing. And this chart was a summary of what we did yet last week, which wasn't part of the four class series, which was meant to be an introduction or a reminder of how the tree works in its multi dimensions. So I'm going to quickly go over it again, um, and then we'll start the class, unless there's any questions from last week. Any, did you able to do any meditation preparation for this? Yeah. And how'd that go? Not too well. <laughs> Not too well? No, I'm used to meditating with my eyes closed. Yeah. And I found it really hard to keep my eyes open. Yeah. And I could only go for 10 minutes, and I was anxious to get rid of the 10 minutes really yeah. quickly because it's hard. Yeah, it is for some, yeah. it, you get used to it. The, when you're doing a quiescent meditation, which you'll see when you start, when you start getting into the, the healing process in the <coughs> four worlds, why that's so. Okay. And the, uh, the Dalai Lama, as he does it every morning for 15 minutes, said if you open your, if you close your eyes, you'll get the same benefit as if you stay home and watch cartoons. <laughs> why, why is that? Is that neurological? Yeah, because you start. You start um, uh, creating things, and the whole idea with with quiescent meditation is not is to remove yourself. So when your analytical meditation is when you close your eyes, mm -hmm. is when you're pinpointing onto one particular thing, and that's when you close your eyes. But when you're doing quiescent, you're trying to remove yourself, and um, if you remove yourself, and you don't make it about yourself then you can actually experience the, the, the whole process. Okay. Well, I know, I know it's going to take time to get used to doing Yeah, and then one, yeah, one day it comes naturally. Yeah. I've, yeah. I've taught it to criminals. Yeah. i taught it to, to so many people, and everybody has mastered it. Just, just practice. What, we, what I did find out is that people, uh, uh, which is consistent with what the Tibetans taught me, was it has to be done on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. You can't do it, skip days. And the length of time is less important than the uh, continuity, the consistency. Hmm. Okay. That's is that why towards the end of the week it was a lot easier for me than the beginning of the week? It's just the continuity of doing it? Yeah, because mo most of our weeks are about improving ourselves, developing ourselves, uh, uh, solving problems, making progress. And the key thing is, which what I want to go into, which I'm not sure I've ever gone in before, is that all, all healing, according to the Kabbalistic theory, is about removing yourself. And when we went, when we went through it yes, uh, last week, we went through the four worlds, and in this model, it's how intention manifests into the physical and becomes manifest. It goes through the four world process. Um, the opposite model, which is the healing process, which is the four worlds of healing, is removing yourself. And not making it about yourself. And that's that's one of the secrets. Okay. So was this clear the last week, those of you who were here? Though I know some of you weren't here. Okay, so the, the tree has Ten, ten dimensions, it has four worlds, and it, uh, these are the four worlds, and everything begins in the roots that goes through the crown, that above the crown you have the aim self, which is the inter uh, eternity, the infinity, but beyond that is a concept which is different than, than the vacuum and the zero point energy and those things is the I am, which in English there's no words for, which is the closest translation is non-existence. So um, then when the tree manifests, there's the luminosity stepping down into the light. And this is the spiritual realm. It's called the, the Atsilut, the intention. Um, all, all of everything that we experience in existence is, comes from 
this realm, which they call the Nikuda, which is like the dot, that all the universe would come originally from a dot, and that um, so similar to the, the Big Bang theory, but they they wouldn't have known about the Big Bang, and that so anything that we experience comes from from that realm that that that's uh, an explosion of the big of that dot. They say it's the size of a dot, and then it would have to go in, in the spiritual realm, the emanation realm. It would have to go into Bina, which is the receptive le level, and the receptive level has to go through a process called Simsum, which is very Kabbalistic, of something contracting itself in order to become larger than itself. And where a lot of people get mixed up, and so I keep repeating that, a lot of people say, well, this is a tree, but this is a learning um, model. It's not the actual model. The model is like of a crystal. The tree actually would have its roots. And as you see, the one back there, there's circles within circles, there's ways. Of, the best way that I was taught, it's more like a river with rocks creating eddies. And they all go into each other. They're not really separate. But for a learning process, we have to separate them so we can actually visualize. Because this is the same pattern, uh, according to Kabbalists, that creates universe, the universe and it creates uh, cells in the body. It creates everything repeats the same pattern over and over again. And it has to go through this process. And in the process, there is a very strict regulatory system. And the regulatory system, which is um, keeps things into the center. So you, when things go to the left or to the right, all the spherot are designed to keep the energy flowing till something actually becomes on the bottom, it becomes manifest. And in order for it to become manifest, um, it, it has to be go through this regulatory system. So the word for sin, it's important to understand that word because if that's a Greek concept and there's no concept in Kabbalah or of, of sin. So they call it chet, uh, uh, which translates Yeah. So chet means missing the mark, which in other words, the, the goal is to have your aid and intention, depending on what level, to come eventually become conscious, conscious down here, and that if you're off-center, you can't get it to go straight down the middle pillar. So the system is designed to regula regulate itself. Is there a physical universe multiple at the bottom? Is that what it is? Or? Yeah. One of the other things, what are they? I mean, it's, been, it's symbolic of something, but are they something real too? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I'll go over that. Okay. Yeah, I'll go through that. That's a good question. So, um, so this level is Atsilut, which is emanation. And all the Kabbalah say, and this is where a lot of the confusion is, is that they feel that we need to, uh, to learn to know God. But they say we can't. All we can know is how this level reflects inside us. But we can't actually access it. <coughs> Where the access comes about is, is down here. This is just a review from last week. I'm just going over it again. This is not the, the material of the class. So you have your in, the intention that has to go through a step-down process because it's so powerful at that level that otherwise it would blow itself up. Uh, so it's literally a transfer. So according to the Kabbalistic system, hey, sorry, I'm late. It's okay. This is just a review from last week. I, I haven't really started yet. So the the system goes from the spiritual, and then it goes into the next world, which is Bria, where Bria is where something emerges from nothing. So from nothingness. And that's the mental level. So from a, a um, creation standpoint, that's the level of, of observation. 
uh, objectivity, non-reactivity. On this level, it's the level of judgment. It's also the mental level. It's where nothingness, something emerges, emerges from nothingness. So, um, at this level, which there's two ways Kabbalists called it, which is din or judgment or gevora, you'll see it in some, some texts, which means to um, overcome something. But this is also the level, not, it's not judgment in the way we do. It's not right or wrong, it's the level of distinction. So this thing, something takes on a personality, so it's something that becomes a, um, a so this, this becomes a pen and this becomes a, and something else becomes a fish, this becomes a human. This is the level of distinction and that it's balanced off by uh, chesed, which means kindness or mercy. So what happens for those of you, in the Kabbalistic idea, there is no evil. But what does happen in the Kabbalistic system, that if something, if you break down the regulatory system, sort of what happens in the human body, that we have very fine regulatory systems to keep us balanced. And if we, we over, if we, from our own um, intelligence, thinking we're smarter than nature, we shut down the regulatory system, then the idea of it coming back into the center goes away. It's the same thing here at the level of the mind, that if too much energy goes into this level, they say it spills over and causes what's called the Sitra Akra, which is an alternative universe, and that's where the evil comes from. So in the original design, for anything to become manifest, there is no evil. It's totally uh, the regulatory system breaking down. Okay? So, any questions so far? I'm going through fast. I'm going through thousands of years in five minutes. I just have one question. Um, I said, sometimes I don't understand what these, like, what these stuff here really are. I mean, if I were to say outline the U.S. government, like the Congress here, mm -hmm. they put the executive branch here, and, and the Supreme Court there, and really it's showing the organization of the system. But this is deeper. I mean, these are not these organizations of something. This is these are real, real something, real worlds with differences in between. Them. Consciousness realm. No, consciousness realm is down here. This is consciousness down here. Yeah, see, I don't understand what they are either. Yeah. Um, I'll try to go in it because this is about the four worlds of healing. So I'll try to go over it again, and then maybe we can have another review someplace else. But to go through, but the the best way I know it, it's. Uh, in the, the book of um, Yitzhirah, which we haven't got yet, which is the book of formation, which is part of what we're at, which is also our emotional world, that was written in the second centuries, it, call, it discusses the dimensions as, um, as pulsations, as numbers, and frequencies, the way we would translate it. They would also be... Um, uh, in a sense, how the frequencies manifest as, as a, an experience, and also uh, uh, how they would be in terms of the uh, dimens dimensional realms. And that was sort of first reference to these dimensions, these spheroids. So it would be these spheres. Later in the, later in the Middle Ages, it was more referenced in the, in the Zohar, in the mystical texts, and then there was more references by Isaac uh, Loria in the 16th century, and um, so it's, it's sort of like scattered. So it depends on what level you're operating for them to become physical, but I've, I've also known people that, to set up businesses based on this model, uh, organization, but it's also, it's, some people say it's also the model of all crystals, and they say it's, and it's the model of the universe. I don't know if that answered your question. Repeat no, no, the question. I don't think you can. I don't think you can in the support. No. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the best way I understand it. It's a regulatory system. To keep energy functioning from from the higher levels down to the lower level and keep the process going. The same thing, sort of like our body works on. So whether they're 
the fine like this, like we drew it here, probably not. For like flames of reality, different levels. Of Depends on which level you're looking at. It's not one way of looking at it. So let me just repeat. So this is the mental level. So this is the level of observation. This is the level. The spiritual level is is the level of intention. So for something to manifest, you have to have an intention, a clear intention. Then it has to go through a, 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 a neutral observation, which is the mental realm. So the way the Kabbalists look at the mental level as the transformer, that the energy is so powerful that it'd be like plugging in the lamp in the Huba Dam, that everything that's in the mental realm is is um, is out there. I like that. And it works as a transformation. Then when you get into the next level, which is the Yitzhira, which is the emotional level, then the emotional level is all the possibilities. And we talked about there's always six options in anything that manifests in the Kabbalistic system. And so this is the level of the individual creation, the emotional level. And when you think of it as the biochemistry, you have so many peptides, neuropeptides, hormones.